Coming with the representation of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, put your hands together for our brother, Minister Abdul Hafiz Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of the Worlds. To Allah alone do I submit and seek refuge in. It is he who is the reveal of all truths, the sender of all prophets, and the creator of all things. We thank him for Moses and the Torah, Jesus, and the Gospel, and Muhammad, and the Holy Quran. Peace be upon all of the worthy servants of Allah. However long I am blessed to live, I remain eternally grateful to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the eternal leader of the Nation of Islam, for revealing to us the reality of Allah in the person of Master Fard Muhammad. We refer to him as the great Mahdi, or the self-guided one, who came and raised up the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and made him his messenger, Messiah, the exalted Christ. We are thankful to them both for giving unto us their son, a man born from two men without the agency of a woman, a spiritual birth. And while blood is thicker than water, spirit is thicker than blood. We are thankful for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who serves as the national representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, but he's so much in the volume of the book, and so are we after him. After him. For one must come and lead us out of this darkness. And that one is Elijah Muhammad, our eternal leader, but he has a helper, and his helper is steadfast, and on point. He's precision, and he has the heart and the love of God for Allah, his Christ, and for us as a people, and ultimately for humanity who will obey God. That's Minister Farrakhan. I wish to greet all of you this morning, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum. I pray that everyone is doing well by the grace of Allah. Now, brothers and sisters, let's get straight to the point this morning. Last Sunday, from the city of Atlanta, Georgia, I don't know how you feel. I don't know. Maybe you're wondering how I felt. But if you didn't hear my voice, there's something wrong. The day you don't hear me bear witness, then you show sure enough need to do more than a fact check like they're doing on Donald Trump. You need to do a spirit check. Because I am still moved by him. I don't bear witness to the minister to help him. He don't need our help. He's self-inspired. But I bear witness to the truth. He says, if I'm speaking truth, then say something. That's right. Sitting there quiet in your seat. Yes, now, whoever wants to be quiet, that's on them, but not Brother Abdul Hafiz. I got something to say. You ain't got to see me. But one thing you know for sure, yes, sir. Yeah. we's in the room. That's right. That's right. Did you see how the minister moved us? Yes, sir. Did you see the 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 statesmanship, yes. the representation, yes. the choice of words, right. huh? the purportment, the livery, mm -hmm. right. but the love in which he even chides. I mean, powerful. A declaration of independence. But in order to be independent, you have to come out of her my people. It's time for us to come out of America. In mind, 
in thought, in action. She may not want to give us the separate states or territory, but we got to take control of where we live. Because in America, we live in a black community, Hispanic community. Talk back to me. Bangladesh community, German community, Korean community. Is that right? Italian community. Talk back to me. What's Pelham Parkway? What's Park Slope? What's Fordham Road? What's Bed-Stuy? What's Midwood, Brooklyn? Huh? What is Riverdale? Huh? What's the Polo Grounds? Talk to me. Yes, What's Jamaica States? Right. What's Rosedale? Right. What's Hempstead? Yes, but you got Garden City, but it's part of Hempstead. Right. So there's a difference in the village and Garden City, but it's all Hempstead. What's Syosset? White folks. Nassau County, the richest county in the country. Did you know that? But people pour all around it and all in it. Huh? Okay. So, you, 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 here's, we're getting straight to the point. We just happy living like this? The minister asks, Minister Farrakhan. Well, when I say the minister, that's the only minister I'm talking about, the minister. But, you know, I figure I've clarified in case you think it's somebody else. But, we say the minister, that's the only minister, the minister, <laughs> right? He said at 10, 10, 15, can, how long can we continue to live under this present political context? How long, construct? How long? So family, it's time now. So yes, on, on last Sunday, he declared, not that it's not been declared, but he's letting us know we've reached that peak time now of rulership. He declared our independence. He is not the declaration because the Savior came and did that. So it's a declaration from the declaration. We're going to have to be separated. There's no future for us in trying to make the American dream, which is an illusion, work for us. That's what he said. Let's just get straight to the point. He ain't got to build up. Sometimes that's a problem in our relationships when you know you like this with each other. You ain't no longer going like this. You like this. What should I do? Separate. Separate. You're already separated. But, but I love him. Well, he must don't love you because... <laughs> you got to start coming back toward each other. But separation might make him wake up. Or make her wake up, brother. Well, well you're going to... Yes, I'm going to step out. I'm not stepping out on you. I'm just separating. So we can reconcile, record each other, because evidently there's a problem. But then if he's not recording you, and you ain't trying to be recorded, then it's time for a divorce. Because you no longer love each other. America don't love us. Every time they kill us in the black community, by any police department, we always got to talk. Uh, this is not an indictment against the police department. We love NYPD. We love the Chicago PD. We love Charlotte PD. We love this one. We love that one. We want to stop it. That's right. We're not indicting good officers. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says good speaks for itself. We got to deal with the negative. We go into the grave and they go home and have for a mignon. Now, we're not calling nobody to run out no doors and get no apparatuses and whatnot. That's right. Our unity is how we fight. That's right. But, but, 
if you just keep gunning us down, you produce a response that you must take responsibility for. It's like a man beating up on a woman. Just slapping all the damn time. And that woman get fed up with getting pimp slapped. Come on, you know, you don't get tired of that? So I'm saying, I don't get tired because it better not happen. That's what. <laughs> one eye open, that's what it better be. He, 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 he can't keep that one open. <laughs> but for those that ain't no one eye open, they get away with it. When that woman gets fed up, whatever that man gets, he brought on him. Can't keep shooting us down. And then the police unions, the minister said, those are the ones that are the terrible ones, the rotten ones. Look at the police union here in New York. Well, you have to understand that when it came to our sister in the Bronx, that, uh, mm, you know, there was a call that one of the family members was going to be killed. Yeah, but when you got there, they weren't being killed. And when you got to the apartment, three of you, four of you, were in the apartment. What was going on? I'm sorry. These are all signs that we need our independence. We need to police our own communities. As the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan have said. So we're either going to separate into a separate state or territory of our own, as Mr. Muhammad said, or we're going to work to control our communities. But we're not making it here. We're not making it with the schools. We're not making it with health care. We're just not making it at all. And when Mr. Trump said, what else can you lose? You're getting upset because he told the truth about the black community. And you want to go with a few success stories here. Remember what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, that no one leader can rise above what? The condition of its people. So if a leader can't, what make you think you and me can? You sitting on the, you on the train, reading your newspaper. Could be the final call. Reading the Negro news, yes, look at them, look at them. Look at them Negroes did to each other in best time. Negroes killing each other in Mount Vernon. Negroes killing each other in Queens. Killing each other in the Bronx. Man, Negro dead right next door to my house. Negro dead in my back room, just dropped dead, I didn't even know. Man, them Negroes gotta get it together. Well, who are you talking about? Our own people. So then what are we gonna do to solve the problem? Because America's not working to solve it. We found out that we're mentioned five or six times in the Democratic document. Small mentions. Zero times in the Republican document. Minister Farrakhan says we've given our votes, majority votes to the Democratic Party. They give us very little of next to nothing in return. Republicans don't even care about giving us anything. Because middle America is not about the black man. So make America great again, many have said, the minister said, means make America white again. Mrs. Clinton has promised nothing to black people. She go eat your collard greens. Huh? I don't know whether she eat neck bones, but I know we don't eat no neck bones. Might eat your pancakes, right. put some extra syrup, right. go to the soul food restaurant, get some chicken. And she's the one. They run her record from 30 years prior. Right. Run it now. Run New York State. What has she done? On, and you don't want to run Secretary of State. You're bombing the hell out of Syria. You're bombing the hell out of them. They get one leader gone. 
displacing millions. And you crying on them on TV, talking about your opponent is this and your opponent is that. No, you produced it. You wonder why nobody want to vote. So listen, we're going to have to be separated. If the man of God said it, then that's the mind of God. There's no future in us trying to make the American dream. You want a house and a picket fence. And we got it, but we got it with a balloon payment. That's right. We got it and we lost it in foreclosure. We got it and we lost our job. We got it and they fought us with the Affordable Home Care Act. Made us fight in order to get the lower mortgages when President Obama's office could have did it with one stroke of the pen, but they wanted to make sure the banks still got their money. How are you going to get the American dream? You playing lotto. How well is lotto going? You know you're playing it. You know you're playing it. I'm going to close my eyes. You know you're playing lotto. You, 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 you. <laughs> oh my God. And some waiting for it to hit. Tell me I'll take the 90 days. No. You know what I mean? I'll take 90 days. Yeah, but what, 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 happens, what happens if a law take all your money in the 90 days? How 90 days gonna feel then when you're broke again? Trust in the promise of Allah. Don't be a lot of fool. You go into the psychic, read your hand. Read your own doggone hand. Uh, this one is going left to the east, and north, south. And this one look crooked. Yeah, I'm pretty crooked. And uh, this one going straight. Yeah, if I get on Surat al Musakim, I'll be all right. I mean, you. Family, family. We, we, we got to get away from this. We can't continue to stand to this. Right. Would you agree? That's right. you, you have no choice. We, we've been trying it. We've been voting ourselves to death. Right. You done pulled the lever for every benevolent white man. Now you want to pull it for a benevolent white woman and another benevolent man. One who's a gangster and the other she knows how to be sweet, the minister said, but she more hawkish than Mr. Trump. You want to put an end, and all we're going to do is go to more war and more war and more war. She's not talking about bringing no troops home. At least President Obama said, let's bring them home before he send them back. <laughs> but you know I'm telling you the truth. This is the actual fact. He sent them back. Are we still in Afghanistan? Are we back in Iraq? Yeah. Are we in Syria? Yeah. All right. No politics can bring about the kingdom of heaven on earth. When we say in the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it, as it is in heaven, Minister Farrakhan says that is a political statement from God. But it's politics, he said, connected to God, not to evil. This is why his subject is next Sunday. If Satan cast out Satan, huh? And the house is divided, how then can the his kingdom stand? Huh? How? We choosing between Lucifer and Satan. It's the same individual. Allah says in the Quran, hypocrites, men, all women, are all alike. So don't get no gender thing. When you're a hypocrite, it don't make a difference if you're a female. You're a female hypocrite. You're an enemy to the community. You're a brother, hypocrite, enemy to the community, saying out of your mouth that which is not in your heart. Coming to meetings late, leave early. Don't show up at all, yet you gave your word. Show up on time, but take no assignments, no tasks, no goals. Show up on time, but have a bad attitude. 
show up on time, but interrupt the meeting with unnecessary foolishness. Man or woman, it don't make a difference. So when you go abroad and them gypsies rob you, a lot of them are females. Because you fall for a woman. And it's somehow a man fall for a woman for the promise of something from her. They say just the promise of something. And he gives up all his stuff. <sighs> she ain't gave him nothing yet. She ain't did nothing for him, to him, or with him. Just promise. And he give you everything. Huh? I'll do this for you if you do this for me. I'll do that for you if you do this for me. Well, you better wake up and say, okay, well, let's get to doing it. <laughs> until, until we do something together, then we all get something together. But what I'm saying is, stop being a people whom we've been, that's how we've been with the Democratic Party. If you vote for me, I'll do this for you. That's the point I'm making. Go for me. Pull the lever. That's your power. That's your vote. That's your voice. Pull it. And you got power in America. How long we been pulling the lever? How much power do we have? Do you feel empowered? You pull the red lever. And we voted for this one and voted for that one. What did they come back and do for us? How many jobs? As we said this morning, they said under the Clinton administration, unemployment was down. Yeah, because you're locked up. Nearly a million of the black men. So unemployment definitely would be down when we all in prison. Three strikes you're in. Put us to work under slave labor. So no politics. And bring about the kingdom of heaven on earth. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us our root problem is not a political one that necessitates a political solution. Our root problem is a spiritual one that necessitates a spiritual solution. Minister Farrakhan says we have to deal with fear and cowardice because we're being asked now by God to stand up for truth, stand up for justice. Stand up for righteousness and be willing to challenge lies and liars wherever they raise their head. Now he's doing it. We're walking right behind him doing it. But what about the rest of us as a nation? Are we willing to step into the arena and challenge lies and liars? The question is, are we willing to challenge ourselves? Yes. Because that's the big challenge. Isn't that what the minister said last Sunday? The challenge of self. The jihad of self. The war against self. So we got to make sure we're not the liars and the liars. Huh? We got to cut that head off. Then we can go out, you know, not physically, you know, mentally. Yeah, you know, you got to say that today because, you know, some of us, we just get a little crazy. Yeah, Brother Abdul Afi said he got to cut the head off. <laughs> so I was at home trying to realize I went on the internet. How do you cut the head off? I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> Brother Afi, no, that's not what the heck we was talking about. It's a picture. <laughs> Taking four devil's heads, I don't mean go get four <laughs> devils and kill them. So we gotta deal with fear, cowardice, scared to death, Muslims, scared to death, Christians, scared to death, Hebrews and Jews, scared leadership, ready to run. That's why we should never assign to ourselves that we're 10,000 fearless, the minister said. Who qualified you to be fearless, he said. Who made you fearless? So don't say you fearless, and then you run with your fearless self. And you're on camera.
We don't know who we are until we face challenge. So whatever challenges we face in our life thus far, all right, what about the next one? We got to stand up with everyone that comes. Huh? Huh? The enemy pull us over. We got to pray to Allah in the name of his Christ, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that look, help me to get through this. Pull you over on the side of the road. We're going to lock you up. Allah, help me to survive the encounter. Only your help can get me out of this one. Otherwise, I'm ready to come to you right now. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says when the enemy comes against us, we're going to have to fight. He says, fight, and you may get hurt. Fight, and you may lose your life. Fight, and you may win, but you won't know what will happen if we don't fight. There's rapists running around. We teach our women in the nation, and we teach the broader sisters, fight for your womanhood. That's right. Fight. Do all that you can. And you never know. Yeah, you'll be just like others. You get them up off you. You kill them. But you gotta have that in your mind. But if we succumb, then you'll never know. Same thing, brother. Yes, sir. Fight. Yes, sir. <laughs> Comedian said one time. Two men in prison. Somebody named Bubba. I don't know who Bubba is. <laughs> Bubba said, you mine. One man said, I'm going to tell jokes. Keep Bubba off me. Bubba said, there ain't no more jokes you can tell. What you going to do? Hell, we going to fight. Ain't going on here today, Bubba. I don't know about who was here before, but it ain't going down this way today. We going to fight. Somebody going sleepy time up in here. And I don't intend for it to be me. So whatever you got, matter of fact, you ain't got to bring it. I'm coming. Go at him. When someone want to challenge you, go right at him. See what they do then. You'll scare you. Put fear. In. But you got to fight. We can't have fear and cowardice today. So we got to fight today with truth, with actual facts with wisdom, with unity, we got to fight. And then when they don't like all of that, and it comes physical, then guess what? We're ready to bring you a little something, something, if that's what you want. If they attack the mosque right now, everybody going to fight. Men, women, babies going to fight. And babies going to fight when they see you fight. Oh, they're attacking mama. Oh, they're attacking grandfather. Oh, they're attacking my dad. Oh! Oh, get down into it. On, you teach the babies, poke the eyes out. When we hit them low, you hit them up high. Bam! I almost kind of knocked myself out right there, but you know what I mean. Hook them up. We in the right. We're not doing nothing wrong. So we say at the end of every mass meeting, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Be not the aggressor. But if, you, if we are aggress, what? Talk with those who talk with you? Pray with those who pray with you? No, fight with those who fight with you. And may Allah grant us victory. See, don't leave the God out. Don't think because you fight, automatic we're going to win. No, you better throw some Allahu Akbar's in there. Allahu Akbar. Huh? You better mean it. Don't be using it for the moment. Because you're going to need a few more of them law lock bars. <laughs> Especially if they don't go down after you didn't with that first one. <laughs> Allah is the greatest, but you got to keep bringing the great. Take that enemy down. But we got to fight. Come on, brother. All right. Black people, the minister said, if they're not going to give us some states that we can call our own, we have to take control of where we live. That means we're going to be getting involved in local politics. 
and the politicians are going to be ours. And they're going to do what we want for our community. We send you there for this black, this Latino, this aboriginal community. And there's others in it? Good. you there for them too. But we the majority. you there for us like others are there for their own people. Why well, I get so weak, that's right. You don't go right, that's right. Everybody else been doing it. That's our problem. We like talking about, and you know, and this group got that, and this group does that, and this group has that. And, well, what about us? Well, we chicken soup, we don't know how to come together. Of course we do. And God is going to force us. Because we're a colony. But aren't you tired of being a colony? Subjugated by another ruler? Coming in and out of our community the way they want to come in and out? Huh? What if they knew? Ain't going to be no more police brutality here. Huh? Because you brutalize our people. You pay a price. But well, that ain't right. Good. Then get out. We'll police ourselves. Because we're learning to love ourselves. Evidently, you don't want to learn to love us. So we're going to love us. Do you understand? Well, what's going to happen if one of us, oh no, one of us going to pay a price. So that everyone else can see. You say, well, what is the price? I guess you have to find out what it is. Because the price is right. I don't know. But you want me to tell you everything? <laughs> This is real, family. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Do you remember the man in the Bronx this year? The man was in his apartment while he was downstairs talking to his wife on the phone, attempting to rape her. Yeah. And he caught him in the elevator. Beat him down with a crowbar. And they wanted to prosecute him, saying that, well, he didn't catch him in the act. Well, what do you want him to do, rape her? Rape her? Then kill her. Oh, heck no. This is the fuck. We putting in work on you. Then you tried to lay hands on her? And she fought you off and somebody else happened to be in the house? Well, the brother's off, praise be to Allah. You know, you guys are off. He's free. But I'm using that as a picture of how we got to take care of our own community. We don't need no more bloodshed. We got enough of that. But if we must fight, we will. You understand? Yeah. Okay. Let's go on. If you vote for Trump, he'll put you on a rocket ship to hell. <laughs> Hillary is going in the same direction. You all are going to hell with them both. The minister said, she'll slow you down a little bit, but you're still going to end up in hell. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Still going to end up in hell. So, who to vote for? Vote for Allah and the Christ and the Mahdi. You say, but that's not on the ballot. Yes, it is. It's in the ballot of your heart and your mind. I'm not voting for Lucifer or Satan. Because they're the same thing. So that's what the minister means. In Congress, when there's a vote, there's a what? A yay, a nay, and a abstention. Come on, you was paying attention, right? Okay. Well, we abstaining. I'm abstaining. You can do what you want. But I'm not voting for neither one of them rotten characters. Trump, he talked like a gangster. Let's just go take the oil. We're just going to take it. I said, damn, this is Scarface? What's going on around here? Let me introduce you to my little friend. And Miss Clinton, she just smooth about it. But when she gets among other certain groups, oh no, she tells you what she gonna do. She sure enough gonna take it. We're not against anyone, but they're not, none of them are for us. So we have to be against them because they're not for us. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's go on. There's no government on this earth, the minister says. 
that can give the people what the people desire of freedom, of justice, and equity, which is equality. There's no government. Name one. I'm, I'm really waiting. Raise your hand and name one. Name one. I'm not, I'm not mocking you. Name one. If you know that there's one that gives freedom, hmm? justice, and equality from the perspective of God or even political perspective, name one. Where is it at? There's upheaval and uproar everywhere. And when you go on that vacation and it's all about the resort, but not the town, when you go into town, you almost be ready to leave the resort because you wonder if they're going to come from the town and take over the resort. Because everybody upset. Nobody got it nowhere. I'm just giving you the real picture. By the grace of God. The whole world is an upheaval. Is there peace in Mecca? No, Muslims don't even want to go make Hajj. Because of the infighting among Muslims. Talk back to me. Is there peace in Central and South America? No infighting and killing each other? Over drugs and other things? Yes. Is there peace in North America? Is there peace in Canada? Heck no, they're fighting right now. They want freedom. Quebec wants to be separated. You go to England, Ireland wants to be separated. Everybody wants separation somewhere. Well, I think we need separation too. And I'm not talking about separation and anxiety. We want a nice, joyful separation. But if you won't give us a separate state or territory that you owe us, then we're going to start controlling where we live. Period. No more control than anyone else. And this means on the political level. We ain't going to run no more five Negroes running for one spot. Nope. We all going to get in a room. We're going to pick the best one, run against the opponent, and squash the opponent, get the seat, and represent the needs of our people. That's how we're going to move forward. Watch. You watch now. And we can do it. Just got to stay unified. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Unity. Now, if we don't want to agree with this, then we may think that this world is going to continue the way that it is. It's not. It's steadily going out. It's steadily going down. Yeah, it's on decline. I heard the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan say that the white man's world is like snow piled up high and deep. But all it takes is the sun to come and melt it like it never existed. You know how snow gets on your property after a snowstorm? And then Allah brings the sun out afterwards and it melts the snow like it was never there. Evaporates it. That's the white man's world. Let's move on. Islam never stifles creativity. It enhances it. So you must use your creative energy to create things that are useful. Islam, when properly understood, yes. properly applied, through prayer, through faith, through belief, through work, yes. through implementation. It's one thing to talk the talk, walk the walk, but we got to do the next step, which is what? Work the work. Yes. And when you work, creativity comes out. Huh? When the brain ain't dil is not diluted with crazy things on the idiot box. It can be a wise tool if you use it wisely. Look at things that challenge your mind, but we're looking at foolish things. So we're a fool sitting there looking at the fools act for us. We giving them ratings and we get nothing in return. So we love the devil because the devil gives us nothing. That's the teaching. Do you understand? Yes, so we need our creative energy. Stop blaming others why you're not being creative. You're not creative because you're not creative. Nobody holding you back. 
If you don't take a bath, a gazoo, whose fault is it if you come in here funky? You're going to talk about one well, my wife. You know, uh, your wife what? She's my help me. She ain't to help you wash up. That's your job. Well, my husband, he didn't maintain me. He ain't here to maintain you in the bath water. And whatever time, time y'all got together, that's on y'all. But even then, <laughs> you got to wash your own self. You got to clean up. So when it comes to this, no one can stop it unless we allow it. Is that right? Well, I don't like what we're drinking. Well, let's make a new drink. One that's healthy. I don't like what we're eating. So what did the minister do? He went and met a god of agriculture, and now we grow new soil. Huh? Can't find no shoes that fit us. Well, let's find how to get the leather and go and make shoes for ourselves. They don't clean our clothes right. Good. They ruin them. All right. Open up a cleaners. Let's get creative on that. Let's get creative with business. Doing for self. Controlling our own dollars. And stop complaining about us. We, us, it's not no little small group. Come on now. Do you understand? That's not my job. That's right. I'm doing what I need to be doing right now. If that's my calling. Yes, but you got another calling. So then you go and let's do it. Let the word inspire you and let's get busy. Right. And say, hey, look, y'all, we got to do this for the nation. Come on, let's do it. We got to do this for the nation. Someone comes on and tell you, nah, that's a bad idea. Okay, good. You go on about your business. We got to do this for the nation. You don't pay attention to a little small talk when you know God has put something in your breast that's going to advance your people. You don't listen to small talk. That's your fault if you do that. A Muslim is one constantly training and conditioning him or herself to meet and overcome obstacles in the pathway of their freedom. That ain't just a creed for the FOI. That's MGT as well. Black men, black women, children, families. Huh? All right. Let's move on. We cannot get justice and freedom in America seeking to make our former slave masters and their children comfortable with our approach. But it doesn't mean go set the community on fire. It don't mean burn down the only little community that we have. Years ago in Brooklyn, when members of the Jewish community felt the, po the police didn't treat them right, they went and set the precinct on fire. Why are you so quiet? They did it. I didn't tell you go set no precinct on fire. I'm just saying. I'm just saying what happened. That's what happened, yo. <laughs> hey, that's, they didn't go down and burn down all the kinks and have you? Say on fire, we upset with the police. Burn it, torch it, torch the supermarket, torch the deli, torch the cleaners, burn up the ground. <laughs> what are we going to do? So we all upset. We stand looking at each other. Well, where are you going to go? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I got somewhere to lay my head tonight. You shouldn't have burnt your piece down, brother. <laughs> it's almost like the five foolish virgins and the five wise ones. You remember that story, right? Waiting for the bridegroom to come. And the bridegroom appeared. And the, the foolish said to the wise, can we have a little oil for our lamp? And the wise said to the foolish, no, because then we'll run out of it for our lamp. In other words, foolish, you should have filled yours up like we the wise filled ours up. So the bridegroom came, left with the wise, and left who? The foolish behind. We'll be left the same way. You understand what I'm saying? I remember one night we was leaving FOI class some years ago. And it was no snow. But the snow came down heavy. So I'm out doing the LIE and got stuck. Man, I was flagging some cars. Help me out. It was all spinning and moving. One guy, he could have you know, tried to help me. He said, ah, 
Ke bongo. I said, man. So then I realized I had hydraulics on my car. So the light bulb came on. Hit the hydraulic button. Hit it, zoop, zoop, zoop. I said, oh. Man, hit it again, boom, boom, spin, zoop, zoop. I said, ah. Now guess who was stuck? Little ways down the road. And I just kept on stunting. I don't know about it. I mean, I don't want to get stuck again, you know what I mean? <laughs> Let me stop. You get left behind like that. We got to be wise. So we can't make them comfortable, but don't tear up the community doing it. We got to take stance that they don't, that they don't like. Colin Kaepernick took a knee. We should already train our children. Stand at attention. Don't pledge no allegiance. Should already be like that. We give our all to Allah. But the minister said last Sunday, when he put up the Confederate flag, then the American flag, then the flag of Islam, he said that flag we can pledge allegiance to. To the sun, to the moon, and the stars. The universal flag of entire submission to the will of God. This is the flag. That's why it's the flag when you come in the door. Yeah, you have to pass border patrol. Check procedure. We have to check your documents. Who's the document? You. You know, same thing, sisters. And I know you were treated well, and if you were not, you let me know at the end of the meeting. But I believe you were all treated well. So come on inside. We want to make sure there's no weapons up in here. Huh? See? If somebody up in here say, get your hands out of my pocket, okay, but you ain't got nothing in your pocket to get the hands out with. You know what I mean? So you can say it, but you better not say that up in here. Because the room might go black. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. These brothers are here to guard the word, male or female, young or old. You understand? But if you try to rush the word because you don't like what's being said, so we're going to extinguish the word, everything be moving up in here. Mics, rostrum, everything be moving. Until we put it down. That's how we roll in here. It's a spiritual military. Ain't no punks up in here. And we ain't no gang. We righteous. But we roll like that. You're going to come up in here and do what you want to do. Mm -mm. Disrupt the meeting. All right, man. Uh, we got something for you. I keep talking. It's going to be all right. And while we pointing, brothers know what to do. <laughs> you know. <laughs> help you out. You need a little help. That's all. That's saying. You had an arm problem. Mouth wasn't working right. We got, we got a solution for you. Sisters too. Oh yeah. Minister said the mosque is not a church, respectfully. We're military. You got to see. You ain't talking about beating nobody up. You're talking about righteousness. Love, peace. But we gotta keep order. So we can't make it comfortable for the slave masters. So we got to agitate with our unity. With our love, nice. with our pooling of our resources. Nice. This is why we gotta always be out like this. Yeah. Always. You don't know when we're gonna see each other again. Let's move on. Black people, we have all of these organizations and all of these talented people. The one thing we don't have is the unity of the whole. Ezekiel's vision, or the book of Ezekiel, dry bones in the valley. That's you and me. Son of man in the valley with the dry bones, prophesying unto the bones. But there's another son of man, read the book of Ezekiel, talking to him from above in a wheel. 
and they said that they were cherubims, or they were eyes in the wheel. The cherubims, the angels. Huh? He's talking to the Son of Man below. He says, move to the side. You prophesize unto them enough. They've rattled. They tried to come together. But move. I'm going to blow the winds on them. The winds of chastisement. So I'm going to give to you something to give to them every week called the Final Call newspaper. It's the Final Call news. Final Call to the north, to the east, the west, and the south. That's news. It's the Final Call. Black America's way forward. Separate and be saved. See it. That's your answer. That's our answer. That's our answer. The Constitution, I mean the Declaration of Independence says, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and the laws of nature's God, uh, the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to be to the separation. Mm. We'll go back over that at another time. Bottom line, in the Declaration of Independence, we have a clause. We politically can't work together. We need to be separated. White folks believe this in America right now. This is why Trump says, uh, I may not accept the, uh, you know, the results of the election. He's just a different kind of dude, man. He say what he feel the way he want to feel it because he don't owe nothing to nobody. He ain't got to speak a certain way. Has there been bias against him? I believe there has been, and I'm not voting for him. Have they let Miss Clinton get an easy ride? Yes, because they want her in the office. Because they want some. One they're going to control. Do you hear what I'm saying? Okay. So we need the unity of the whole, right? So I'm going to close now. It's time to close. Is that all right? Yes, sir. It's time to land that plane. But since I serve as the New York representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, I can well land it for you. But I figured we would bring the minister to land it for us. So hold on. I ain't say press nothing yet, brother. Thank you, sir. Listen, let me introduce him. Because the minister's coming in person. Right into the mosque. And he's going to land this plane today. And when you get finished with it, you should be ready to come forward to accept your own and be yourself. And every one of us that's here, ready to recommit. So here we are, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Turn it up loud. There you go. July 4th, 1930. On Independence Day, not for us to celebrate the white man's independence, but for us to know that God had come to declare our independence and gave us a flag. Now you're excited now because in Charleston they decided to take down the Confederate flag. And black folk are so easily bamboozled by symbols with no substance. So the white man deceived us again. He took down a flag that represented treason. He took down a flag 
They represented those who seceded from the union over the question of slavery. So we didn't like that flag. Well, yeah, that's right. But the American flag. Listen now, listen. Listen to the minister. Teach me. Come on now. Yes. Listen to this now. All praise to Allah. We caught a lot of hell since emancipation under that flag. Sharecropping was under that flag. Jim Crow was under that flag. A hundred years of lynching was under that flag. Police brutality and mob attacks is under that flag. And we fought in every war under that flag and have not received justice under that flag yet. I respect the flag because it's the flag of an independent, sovereign nation. I respect it because one day we hope to be sovereign and independent Come on now. in a nation of About. our own. And our flag is a flag that they can never take down because they never were involved in the beginning in putting that flag up. And that flag is the sun, the moon, and, and the star. Come on now. Yeah. Come on, Bob Minister. Yes, sir. The reason that Master Father Muhammad brought that flag because we were in the beginning when that flag went up. Oh, you didn't hear me. Go ahead. <laughs> you are the ancient of days, having no beginning of days or ending of years. That's how long the black man has been in existence. And that's why when the white man sees you, he's terrified. He's terrified because when he looks at you, he's looking at the Alpha. And he's looking at the Omega. The beginning of their life and the ending of their civilization. The beginning of the universe. All praises due to Allah. Come on, let's give a beautiful hand to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Brothers and sisters, as we get ready to close out now, you've heard the word. I'm not here to present anything new. I'm just here to represent what the teacher has presented and to help and achieve it being accomplished in our time. Yes, sir. We will not frustrate the will of Allah God. We will be free, justified, and equal, either in a territory of our own, or until then, taking control yes, of our communities. Okay? Yes, sir. So may Allah bless you this morning. This is a declaration of independence. 
next Sunday, if Satan cast out Satan, a house divided, how then can his kingdom stand? So it won't. A new one has to come. The minister will speak to the world. We want every one of you to be present here at the mosque. Pack it out. Pack it out. And then tell others. Get five to ten others. To listen to it at NOI.org. Get the app on your phone. Listen to last Sunday's Day of Atonement message. Come out of her, my people, a declaration of independence. Tonight, three and a half hours. Mm. Yeah. We sit there looking at foolishness that long. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Sit down. Don't talk about it's too long. He's going to hold your attention anyway. I tweeted, only Minister Louis Farrakhan can hold our attention. For three and a half hours. And he had hours more to go he said. But he finished his mind. So on next Sunday. He's going to complete it. Then we go to work. He's going to have a press conference for black press. Alright. So. We will be on inshallah at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. In the Mix Radio, in the Mix, M-I-X-X Radio.com, with Black West, uh, People Before Politics. You can hear us this afternoon. Then at 10 p.m. tonight, we'll be on WBLS, with Rockin' You, Rockin' You, Rockin' You, David Levy, talking to our people in the Caribbean community. What go on, Jamaica? Yama. I ain't got to sound like I come from there. We are it. Sapa say la boule, la pay avec nous. You say that to the oh, the Haitians, yeah, yeah, la pay avec nous. They, merci beaucoup. They greet you. For those of us that got the language down even more, we got to speak it to our people with the truth. Then on Tuesday at 7.30 to 8, we'll be on WBAI with Strong Radio, our brother Serge. And then, before that, for those of you in Manhattan on Tuesday, here's my brother, our guest today, Brother Nate Wood. He's a producer of 30 Frames a Second, a live television cable program on MNN and live stream. Let's give Brother Nate Wood a hand. He moved, the, he moved whoever he had for the program to put out your brother in place. So we'll be on there Tuesday, 2 to 3 p.m. Live. And wherever else we can get, we're going to promote. We're going all out. So believers, we'll have our instructions in about 25 minutes. So I wish to greet all of you with love and respect as we greet you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. All praise is due to Allah. Can I see those brothers and sisters who are guests visiting with us today for the first time? Please stand for us. Please stand, those who are visiting us today for the first time today. Very good. Very good. Let me get right to the point. I pray you are happy you came out today. Were you happy you came out today? Very good, black man. How many of you believe what you heard today taught to be the truth and good for us as a people? 